Welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Today, I am speaking with Amy Lacey of Cauliflower Foods, and we're going to be talking about launching this brand, growing this brand, and the pieces that are working right now, and what it means to be a food founder in this industry. So, Amy, welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. This is exciting. I'm so excited to meet you, too. Likewise. Yeah, I am very excited to have you on here. You have such a fantastic range of products and a really fantastic mission behind everything that you are doing. Maybe we can just open it up for anyone who does not know Cauliflower Foods. Can you just share with us what it is that you guys do and who you are for? Yeah, so we have grain-free, gluten-free products and we have, we just rebranded. So our new name is Cali Foods. We were Cali Flower Foods when we launched it and I founded it, but we've since have other founders or not founders, but other owners in venture capitalists. And they've changed the name because we're not just focused on cauliflower anymore. And I would love to share how I got started because it's part of my, mission. I was diagnosed with lupus. And so I needed to change the way I was eating. And I was a mom, stay-at-home mom of three kids, three littles. And we used to have family fun, pizza and games or movies. And I found myself on Saturday morning. This is before my diagnosis. I would wake up and almost practically not be able to get out of bed. Actually, sometimes not be able to get up out of bed. I'd be really inflamed, swollen. I've been eating regular pizza, not even pizza, but like delivery pizza and finding that I was suffering from inflammation, but I didn't even know that. I didn't even know what inflammation was at the time. So once I was formally diagnosed, okay, I can't give up family pizza night and I want to be able to eat with the kids. They were little. I wasn't mommy eating. I didn't want to be that parent. So I was looking for a way to make a pizza that everybody would eat. And the cool thing about this is back then there was only a head of cauliflower in the grocery store. And I always say this when I tell this story, but I didn't even eat cauliflower. Do you like cauliflower? Be honest. I, I actually do. I don't know. Oh, okay. Anything super crunchy. I go for all the like crunch factors. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because like before the cauliflower craze, it was like the last veggie standing in a veggie tray at a party. Like it was always that white little, and I used to think of vegetables as only green anyways. So this white thing that came into my life was like foreign to me, but I found a recipe, actually Rachel Ray recipe online. And again, there was just a head of cauliflower in the grocery store. There was no cauliflower rice or any of that. And I made it, it was an epic failure. I finally perfected it. Uh, my daughter's mom, because I've been juicing as part of my new cleanse and new health journey. And she's try the juicer to get all the water out of the cauliflower and then it won't fall apart. So I'm like, oh, okay, genius. Like you're 11 years old. Okay. I tried that. It worked. And then friends would come over and I had picky eaters. I had my oldest son was very picky eater. His friends were picky eaters and I could get them to eat it with some cheese and pepperoni on it, which was like, okay, I'm hiding vegetables in here. This is like a win-win. And then I would wake up on Saturday morning feeling great, like popping out of bed, like grain-free, gluten-free was the key for me. Yeah, that's how it got started. And friends and family that would come over, because we used to invite people over for a family fun night. They were like, you need to take this to farmer's market. And it would be so fun for the kids to learn how to work farmer's market. So that's what we did. We took it to farmer's market in Chico, California, in Northern California. It's one of the larger farmer's markets though, for a little town. And it just, I started getting orders before we ever would go to Thursday night market. Can we pick up this many pizzas? Cause we would run out and then a local grocery store picked it up and then I decided to share a story of one of my friends. This is a cool story. Do you mind if I tell it? Please, <laughs> I told you do. I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm at farmer's market. One of my friends that lives about an hour away had a severe autistic daughter. She's a mom of four kids. One of them was nonverbal autism. And the doctor that was treating her, a bunch of therapists were treating her and some doctors, they all put her on what we would call now keto diet, a low carb diet. And so they changed the way she was eating. So she started asking me, Amy, can you send some of those pizza crusts? Because Kenzie loves pizza. So Kenzie would only eat if her mom sat down and ate with her. That's the only way she would eat. So Jesse, her mom and Kenzie would sit down every day 
no joke. They were eating like two crusts a day. They were eating it for breakfast, eating it for dinner. So seven months later, and again, I'm still at farmer's market. Jesse calls me because she lives like an hour away. And she says, I want to come visit you because you're going to be shocked when you see me. And I want to celebrate because Kenzie is now verbal and she's been invited to go to the school and have an aid. And she's talking, which is like incredible. We're talking seven months later. And of course they were eating other products, but Jesse, and I'm hesitant to say this because it sounds unhealthy, but Jesse lost 160 pounds eating low carb in seven months, which I know is not healthy, but the fact is she lost a lot of weight. Wow. So we decide, I decided to share that story on Facebook. I just shared Kenzie's story. You can't share weight loss stories on Facebook, or at least you couldn't back then. You can't be promoting a weight loss product. And I never considered my product a weight loss product. It was just me going grain-free, gluten-free, anti-inflammatory. But I shared Kenzie's story that she became verbal. She was able to go back to school and Jesse's story of her weight loss. And that story went viral online. And all of a sudden I had an e-commerce business and people were wanting the crust on Facebook. And so then I quickly set up Shopify and I started selling the product online, which had its all oh, a host of issues that I had to quickly learn, like how to sell frozen online and all of that. Um, but that's what happened. It went viral. So in January of 2017, we sold more on the Facebook story than we had the entire year in 2016 in the local grocery store or at farmer's market in one month. Wow. So, yeah, so there was a need out there. People wanted gluten-free, grain-free. They wanted that type of pizza. The only thing in the marketplace that I could find was Udi's and I couldn't eat Udi's. It still was causing me inflammation. So even though it was gluten-free, there was a ton of gluten-free products out there, but that was the only pizza crust I could find. So yeah, we, that's how we got started. And by the end of that year, I don't even want to tell you how well we did, but it was a lot. We sold a lot of pizza crust and I had to really quickly learn how to be in the food business and food industry. So that's how it started. It never was meant to be some big business like it is now. And we have over 16 SKUs and we're in nationwide grocery stores. We're in nationwide Whole Foods, Sprouts, Walmart, everywhere, but two places. And I won't even say those two places. <laughs> Because one of them, I'm really bitter because it's in my backyard. <laughs> That's incredible though. And I love stories like this because you created this from a real need, right? Yeah. For yourself, for your family, and then seeing how it truly changed lives, yours, Kenzie's, Jesse's, and then knowing that can get to more yeah. people and help them and I mean, I don't know though. I'm curious. So it blew up overnight. It blew up overnight. <laughs> Were you like, oh my gosh, no, I just want to keep this as a farmer's market business. I want to keep this smaller. Were you like, no, this is my evidence that I need to go with this blow up and blow it up even more. Okay. So this is, so once I shared Kenzie's story, not only did we get a ton of orders, but I started getting a lot of messages of other people's stories. So I think that gave me this drive to keep going. So I knew I had a mess. I was a hot mess and I made a message out of my mess, but there were all these other people. So it's funny because in 2017, towards the end, I was asked to pitch at Nosh. You're familiar with Nosh. So I did the pitch slam there. And I started sharing some of the stories of people that reached out to me. So I had Gavin, which is a little boy that had a brain tumor and his mom, she wanted us to make Gavin like the spokesperson. Like he loved pizza. Oh, it's adorable. And he's thriving and he's healthy now, but his doctor also put him on a low carb diet. And then I had another little girl, which I now know is an epidemic in the United States a little girl with type two diabetes. You never heard of that. You hear of gestational diabetes, which is type one, but you don't hear of kids having type two. And now we have kids with type two diabetes, diabetes, which is usually due to obesity. So we have this little girl that was a type two diabetic and she too loved pizza. And she, her mom 
had to get creative. I'll be honest. She was like, not going to eat our pizza. She had to like double decorate with sauce and cheese and pepperoni and turkey pepperoni, but she would eat it. And it's so satiating and filling because it's literally just five ingredients. It's cauliflower, a little bit of mozzarella cheese, eggs, and then aerated spices. And now we put husk in it to keep it if somebody hasn't tried it in a while, they need to try it because that actually firms it up because we did struggle with some people had trouble cooking it because it is a vegetable. It, I have no fillers and a lot of, I mean, fast forward. Now we have a ton of cauliflower products out there. It is a billion dollar industry. So I like to say that we created a billion dollar industry, but our pizza, because it was so authentic and literally with the whole head of fresh cauliflower, we don't waste the leaves. We put them in there too. They have so many antioxidants. They're just really good for you. So it it's very sensitive and it can fall apart easily. So the psyllium husk has been a game changer for us. It's firm, it's crispy, it's great. Oh yeah. my gosh, your product is like literally changing so many people's lives. So good out there. It for sure. definitely keeps me going. And that's, you're right though. I was like pulling my hair out. I mean, one of your questions was what was one of the biggest challenges I had early on. And I would have to answer that by saying I was a stay at home mom of three kids. And how do I'm all of a sudden I'm the CEO, CFO, CMO, like literally I was everything. I mean, it's just crazy when I think back on it. I hired my esthetician to be my right hand person because she, <laughs> <laughs> I have Sjogren's too, which is dry eye syndrome. So I can't use makeup. I can't use, even though I have a lot of makeup on today, I can't use mascara. So I was getting lash extensions and my esthetician was doing them. And I'd sit there and tell her all about the business. And she's, I want to come help you. I'm like, come on board. I need help. So she ended up being my right hand person. And now she works in the food industry. Wow. She no longer works for us, unfortunately, but she's in the food industry and it's changed her life. And I have to say, Jesse is now a health coach. It's changed her life. Kenzie is now in public school and it's completely not just our crust, but low carb. A lot of people affiliate low carb. And by the way, I didn't create this product to be low carb. It just happens to be, it just happens to be low carb. I never even thought of it <laughs> until we went into marketing. And then I realized, oh, we can sell this as low carb. Keto was just starting to be a big thing. So it was easy to go that route, but it was never intended to be low carb. That wasn't my issue. I wasn't trying to lose weight. So that was just, I guess, what you could call a side effect of the product, <laughs> but it really changed a lot of people's lives. And yeah, that's how it started. What a beautiful journey. And I love that you just wearing all the hats, figuring it all out, enrolling people along the way. Talk to me about that as well in terms of, okay, so that was back in 2017, you mentioned? 2017. So Friends and family I hired. Got it. I hired friends and family. They came, they helped me. We all grew. I mean, the growth that we had and the power of social media. And it's funny because you'll hear people complain about social media or I'm not in social media or it's a waste of time. And even the power of podcasts, because I started being on podcasts, definitely very powerful but it drew a lot of attention. So the next thing I know, I'm getting private messages from the cast of Hamilton in New York. One of them ordered our products. He wanted to, he was playing an extra and he wanted to get the, the original cast was going away and the next cast was coming in, in New York. And he wanted to play the character Burr. And so he ate our product, lost 27 pounds, got the role and then said, Hey, I love your product. I've been eating it for months. I just got this role. If you guys are ever in New York, come out, I'll get you tickets to the cat to Hamilton. And I'm like, we don't need a reason. We're going to New York <laughs> and we're going to go see the cat to Hamilton. What we started doing is throwing pizza parties for them after they finished their like set. And the whole entire team was able to go see them at various different times. Then when they started traveling, we started traveling with them, a, a group of, by now I have 12 employees. So some of them would travel with them and we would throw these after performance pizza parties for the cast who are just down to earth, amazing people. And they would sing for us and we would have these pizza parties. We did it in Portland, Oregon. We did it in San Francisco. We did it in New York multiple times. So we had this cast of Hamilton and they were, some of the cast members were plugging it for us and it was growing that way as well. And then 
The next thing I know, we were invited to the ESPYs, the Emmys, Teen Choice Awards, New York Food Show, and we met all these people and people were eating our product and loving it. So Kevin Durant wasn't in the pizza business yet. He was looking to be in the pizza business. His mom was at it would have been the SBs. She was at the SBs and she was going around to the different booths. And we were like the last one. And her friend came over and she's turn the sign around. She doesn't eat vegetables. She won't even try it. So we turned it around and we were sampling because it's like athletes. We were sampling like meat eaters, pizza and stuff like that. We had all kinds of meat and cheese and sauce on there. So she comes over. Her name is Wanda. She's in like stilettos, white shorts, big, bright top, just a very big personality. And so we give her a piece of our meat lovers pizza. She eats it, loves it, doesn't say anything. We turn the sign around. We say, you just ate cauliflower pizza crust. <laughs> oh, I have it on video. She starts dancing and freaking out. And the next thing I know, no joke, like a month later, Kevin Durant is looking to get in the pizza business. Now he didn't. Yeah. He didn't come into ours. He ended up investing in biology. Unfortunately, he didn't come to ours, but he went to biology, mm -hmm. but we ended up sending Wanda Durant. We got her address and we ended up sending her pizza crust for a year. Wow. Oh my <laughs> pizza crust for a year. <laughs> so, I mean, it's all these magical things happen for us and it just continued to grow. And in 2018, we, we grew by a thousand percent. Like it was That's crazy amazing. growth. Yeah. That is amazing right there. And like, I have to ask how much of this was strategic plan. We are going to do all these things. We are going to give out this many samples versus just organic naturally happening because you have a great product because you are sharing authentically the impact. Talk to me about the balance of the intentionality versus okay. magically coming <laughs> and be honest. <laughs> I'm being honest. So up until now, up until 2018, I have to be honest, other than production, which I will say to any entrepreneur that's thinking about going into the food industry, get your production dialed in first. Do not launch a product without having production dialed in, knowing if you're going with a co-packer, know that co-packer inside now, make sure they don't steal your product. I have a story. I'm not even going to go there because it's negative, but I have a story of somebody stealing my product who today is still selling it today, the recipe. And unfortunately I did a Warren Buffett handshake because I trusted that person and they, yeah, they took my product and ran with it and now they're selling as well. But, and it's not a brand by the way, that anybody would really know they haven't they're not in grocery stores and stuff. So I just want to make that very clear because there's a lot of really good brands out there and I don't want anyone to think that they were <laughs> that brand. But so a lot of it was just winging it and going with the growth and making sure, like I had a phenomenal co-packer at the time who was like, I mean, I remember this one time I needed his help. We needed to fix something in production. And that happened a lot, by the way. And he had a big trip with his family he was going down to see his sister. He canceled the trip, met me down at the plant, and we spent a whole week working on it and getting it corrected. And that's the kind of co-packer I had. Like I considered family. I actually ended up giving him equity of the business. So you need really good production. And if you're going to work with a co-packer, make sure that person's super solid on your, like on your side, not willing to share your recipe, all of that. So I, I think and the next business that I do production is number one for me. So, yeah, so we were just going with the flow and had a lot of great luck as far as the right people, getting the products, promoting it, willing to share our story. I was traveling all over again, still have my friends and family involved a few strategic employees now that have experience by now. The other thing I really took, and I think this is so important I took customer service and the customer experience to heart. Like I, I would read every review. I would handwrite letters. Customer experience was everything to me. And I think when companies get really big or strategics come in, customer experience goes by the wayside in my opinion. So when I was the owner of Cauliflower and I no longer own it, but that was number one to me, that was even more important than production, which shouldn't be production needs to be number one, but 
just that customer experience and making sure that there was a hundred percent customer satisfaction. And if somebody got a product that fell apart, we wanted to replace it. I mean, again, it's a veggie crust, so it was temperamental. So yeah, those were the early days. Then I had Walmart called me and I almost didn't go out there. Cause I'm like, we're not a Walmart brand. I mean, I felt really rude thinking that in the beginning, I'm not a Walmart brand. I'm a whole foods brand. I'm a sprouts brand. I'm not a Walmart brand. And it was only because I never, I hadn't seen better for you at Walmart. And so I'm like, is this really going to sell there? I went to Bentonville and I'm so grateful I did. And this was not during reviews, not during meetings. This is the buyer calling me and people, if you don't think influencers work or affiliates, they do. So this buyer replaced an older buyer that had been there for years. She was brand new. She was young. She's a, she was a dietitian. She still is. She's not the same buyer anymore, but she still works for Walmart. Just young dietitian looking at influencers, especially in the health space. One of our influencers was a personal trainer and this particular buyer followed her and she was cooking our pizzas all the time organically that's a whole nother story. Another person that landed in my lap out of Nashville, Tennessee, that really created our brand for us, helped us put us on the map. So this influencer was doing it for us for nothing, really. She just loved the product. And this buyer called me and she's okay. I want every single SKU that you have in every single Walmart. I was in a few stores, but not nationwide Walmart. So that's when I knew, okay, I need help with somebody that is experienced in the food industry, that knows frozen, that knows grocery. And that's when I had a lot of venture capitalists in interested in me. And a lot of people offered to buy my company at this point. And I hadn't done anything because we were growing. We were, we were making money. We were doing our thing. By now I had gone to Italy and we created a two ingredient pasta and crackers that we launched, but we brought in, when we got the Walmart order, we brought in venture capitalists. And it's, I always say this, like God throws funny things at you that makes you, that make you like turn one way or the other for me, at least, or the universe or whatever you believe. And while this isn't funny in November of 2018, a big fire ran through Northern California and it burned down an entire town. And that town happened to be one that my mom lived in and my aunt and so all of a sudden I came home from LA, I was down in LA for a food event and I had all these people in their animals in my house. <laughs> they didn't, they couldn't go back to their house. Their houses didn't burn down. The entire town burned down. Like my aunt's neighborhood had 300 homes and hers and one other one was the only one standing, but they couldn't get the insurance and they couldn't go back and live there. So I was like, okay, if I bring in somebody else that's offered to buy my company or invest in my company, I can take some money off the table and help my family. And so that was the driving force, that and the Walmart order. And I brought in Sunrise Strategic Partners, Steve Hughes. He's very well known in the industry with Frozen. He did a lot of different Frozen meals, Boulder Brands, Healthy Choice, all kinds. And so they came in and they really took over. They took over and now we're nationwide in a lot of doors and we have entrees and we're soon to launch breakfast sandwiches and we just purchased Mikey's, the brand Mikey's. So we are growing leaps and bounds and that's, that's a quick story there. <laughs> that's when the strategic came in and there was a lot of strategy. And as Steve likes to say, we need to build the foundation of the house first. And my foundation was all over the place. It was working. We were growing. We had EBITDA on the books. We had great margins, but we weren't set up for grocery at the time. And Steve and the team came in and set us up and we went nationwide in Walmart, the Whole Foods and now Sprouts and so many other grocery stores, Safeway, Albertson, so many. So, yeah. Wow. It's. I mean, what a great reason to bring in outside capital to help you be able to, number one, help your family. Yeah. Uh, family is always at the forefront of everything. And then number two, be able to keep up with this new demand by Walmart wanting to take you national. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a point here where you had even mentioned that some people had wanted to maybe buy the business? 
Were you ever, no, you know what? Maybe I just want to completely sell it and I want to be done with this and start something new or no, your heart has <laughs> never. <laughs> I <laughs> am still in it to win it at Expo yes. West this year. I was there. I told Stephanie, our, our, one of our great sales reps that happened to be one of my friends I brought on that's still with the company. She's a rock star. I told her, I said, put me in the back cooking. I love it. And I'll be in the front talking. Now I'm still super passionate about the brand, even though I don't have equity. And even though I don't run the day to day, I really have been hands off since they came in mm -hmm. since 2019. And so a lot of the newer products and things that are happening now, unfortunately, I can't take credit for that. They get the credit for that. So yeah, it was I think the foundation's been built and we're adding, I mean, we might be on the third story now, as Steve Hughes would put it. We've had some wins. We've had some losses, some decisions that have been made that I didn't have control over that I didn't necessarily agree with. That's hard. Mm. When you're a founder, you have so much passion because it's like a baby. And I describe this all the time. I have three kids. The cauliflower is my fourth child, literally. <laughs> like it is my baby. And when we brought the venture capitalists in, there were so many positive things that happened, but those few little negative things, I, I use the analogy. It's like my baby grew up and started dating the wrong person. <laughs> and I didn't <laughs> like what they were doing with my baby, the influence they had. Not to say that anything that Sunrise was doing was wrong. It's just, it wasn't the same anymore. We were an e-commerce brand and now we were transitioning from e-commerce to grocery. And I had a lot of pride in that e-commerce brand that I needed to let go of. And it's always good to let go of that anyways. You shouldn't have too much. But, you know, we were the number one pizza crust on Amazon all of 2018. We oh, beat out Boboli and Mama Mary's. We had worked really hard to make it a very successful e-commerce, but it was time for it to grow up and become a grocery brand. And that was their goal. And they accomplished that. And then they've added so many SKUs. We have these healthy entrees and funny. I never shopped just like I never ate cauliflower before I made a cauliflower pizza crust. I never shopped in the frozen section. I never bought frozen dinners ever hmm. for myself. Or when I started having kids, even like I bought dino nuggets, but that was about it every once in a while. If my husband was cooking and I was out of town, but I never bought entrees. And now I have a deep freeze and my freezer is full of cauliflower entrees and a few other brands because there have been some really good brands that have come along. It's funny. We just got new neighbors in and they came running over and they're like, you're Amy from Amy's brand. I'm like, no, I'm not, but I think it's a good brand. And it's one of the ones that I have in my freezer. I wish I could take that credit, but no, I'm Amy from Cauliflower Foods. <laughs> and they were so excited that they're like, we heard you're in all the grocery stores and you have beef and broccoli and cheesy chicken. And they named off the entrees. And I'm like, yeah. And the funny thing is, I'm like, Amy's would never have beef and broccoli. <laughs> Because she yeah. wouldn't have beef. So yeah, so sometimes I get mistaken for Amy's, but no, I do buy Amy's. I do Amy's and there's a lot of good brands, but I have never ever shopped in the frozen section of the grocery store until the last couple of years. And I'm so proud of the food industry to really expand its doors and bring in healthier options, especially Walmart. I mean, I'm really proud of them. Like they are taking it serious and they want their consumers to be healthier. You don't see that every day. A lot of people just look at the mighty dollar. Yeah. Yeah. The food industry is definitely going through this fantastic change right now where healthier food options are becoming more accessible. And part of that is also because people like you created these great products that then make eating healthier accessible to people, right? We've given retailers options to land their grocery store yes. shelves versus just what they had before. And all parts of the retail industry are being revitalized because founders saw a need and that need went very much with high demand. And then now retailers are starting to bring it on board as well. Yeah. And I love the fact that people like myself, it's not that they're just creating healthy foods. They're creating healthy foods that taste good. That's like the thing is before healthy foods, really healthy foods, not so no. tasty. <laughs> no. And now there's so many brands that taste really good. 
but you do have to be careful because my daughter is studying abroad in Italy, in Florence, Italy, all this last year. And when I went over there, I ate their food, had no inflammation problems, none, which was shocking to me, but you've got to look at the ingredients. And so some of our healthy brands are now not so healthy. They're not so authentic. So I really encourage people, especially with the go craze. We're going to take keto off our packaging because we don't want to be affiliated with the keto craze. There's a lot of keto products out there and people are putting these fake ingredients and they cause inflammation. And so you really need to read labels. And I think consumers are really smart now and they have the access to the internet. They can really read labels. I think people take their health serious, more serious now than they did. I remember when fat free came out and everybody was like, I'm going to eat the whole thing of cookies. They're fat free. (laughs) We had all these artificial ingredients in there and it was making everybody fat. Yeah. So it's important to read the labels and I love authentic brands that are like five ingredients or less, and you can pronounce them all. That's so cool to me. No fillers. (laughs) Yeah. It makes a huge difference. I was just having this conversation with someone earlier about There's one thing to be vegan, wheat-free, keto, whatever, but then have it just filled with artificial things that aren't actually good for us. And that becomes very counterintuitive to the actual mission of like why people are choosing to not eat wheat or why people might choose not to eat certain foods. It's coming from a health perspective, but then that somehow got all messy and all of a sudden all these additional pieces got added in and it really just tracks consumers that they're being health washed a lot of the times to thinking something is healthy for them. I love that health washed. That yeah. is a great term. I'm going to borrow that. Oh, that's all so yours. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've always looked for food as medicine because when I was diagnosed with lupus, they put me on a drug called Plaquenil, which nobody had ever heard of until COVID hit. And then everybody was talking about Plaquenil. Plaquenil is not a fun drug to be on. You have to have routine eye exams and blindness is one of the side effects. And it's not just a little side effect. It's pretty evident. And then the other thing that Doctors like to do when you're diagnosed with lupus and you have the positive blood work, plus you have outward signs of rashes or inflammation. They like to put you on steroids. And if, have you ever been on steroids? No. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been on them in years and I won't even let them touch me. They make you crazy because they keep you awake. You can't oh sleep on steroids. You're like buzzing. And now I know why they use sleep deprivation in prisons because it really does. It causes a lot of turmoil for your body. Lack of sleep. We all know that sleep is really, it's funny. My husband's board certified in sleep and we're learning so much about sleep now and how important it is to your health. So for many years I was getting inadequate sleep, which Mm. was making me a crazy mom. (laughs) So I do believe food can be medicine if it's the right food. And I'm excited because we now have all these really great supplements coming out and that's becoming the bridge from the lack of nutrients in our food. COVID did a little number on us because people in COVID decided that they wanted comfort food and they went back to eating junk food for the most part. And so our numbers did decline a little, like most of the better for you brands did, but we bounced back. And I'm really proud of that because what we did was we bought our manufacturing plant before COVID hit. We didn't even realize what an advantage it would be, but we wanted to own our own manufacturing plant. So we bought it from that great co-packer that's been like a friend and a family member, not literally a family member, but I feel like he is. So we bought it from him and his facility is right next to all the cauliflower farms in central California, but our home office is in Boulder, Colorado, where sunrise is. It's like the best of both worlds. We've got the unique food industry in Boulder with a lot of connections, but then we're in the, where all the farming is in central in the Salinas Valley of California. So we literally partner with our farmers and use the fresh cauliflower and it heads right over to the manufacturing plant. But what was great about that during COVID, and it was such a blessing is that we could control our own distribution. We had no problems with containers still out there and not like we had everything right there because we had such simple ingredients and our farmers were still farming and it was awesome. So that did not hurt us at all. And when people started realizing, oh, 
I don't feel so good in COVID. I want to get back to feeling good. Our numbers skyrocketed back up, but we did Mm -hmm. like everybody, we did suffer a little bit during that time. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But I mean, what great timing timing is on your side. Like you (laughs) have this beautiful, like cloud that follows you around, I think. And just brings you good luck showers all the time. Well, let me tell you, there was a lot of, I mean, when you are winging it like that in the beginning, that you make a lot of mistakes. I made packaging mistakes that we had to fix that cost. I made a million dollars worth of mistakes in 2018 after I had already learned the business. So, I mean, it was actually over a million. So I say that not to brag, I'm just being humble. Like I had to learn the hard way. I did. And I just learn the hard way. But I think if you're like, when I made the packaging error, one of the things I did, my team was like, let's blame it on the packaging people. Nobody will know. We'll blame it on them. And I'm like, nah, that does not feel right. So I actually wrote a letter to my community. We had a, about a half a million on our email list and I just owned it. I just said, I made a mistake. The buck stops at me. I'm the final one to okay the packaging. We're growing so fast. I'm I'm at this event and I signed off on it and I didn't catch that the numbers on the macros on the back of our box were off. And that was a $250,000 mistake because we needed to fix that and I needed to become clean. I had so many people reach out to me and thank me for being true and honest. Even other food brands, even our competitors were like, wow, that's so cool. Thank you for being honest. And I'm so glad I chose that route because it could have been really easy for me to blame our packaging people. We outsourced our packaging, but that wouldn't feel right. So I think as long as you're authentic and you're true and you're honest and you treat people well, it's not even good luck. It's not even like a cloud of, it is a cloud of blessings, but I think it, everything comes full circle. I don't know if you believe that, but I do what you put out there, what energy you put out there is going to come back at you. And so I just say, be true and authentic and yeah, <laughs> I'm 100. I believe <laughs> I totally believe that too. And it, as we talk about that, it is no surprise that you know, the brand has had the success that it has because you have this level of integrity about you you. and infectious energy around it. And it is very evident, the goodwill and just pure intent of this doing good for people and for yourself. That is, that is very evident coming to that full circle piece. It is no surprise that you and cauliflower foods have had the success that you have had because of that. Thank you very much. I always tell people, I don't know how much time we have. We're wrapping up, but really quick, I'll tell you on a very high level, people will ask me, what can you share with me? And I say, I always talk about the five P's of my business and one is passion. And I hear, I have a good friend that's on a lecture series right now. She just had a bestseller book and she always says, no, passion does not drive business. I'm sorry. I disagree with you. (laughs) Passion is very important. If you're not passionate about your product, then get out of there and do something else. So I think passion is very important. I think people are very important. And I say this all the time. I was new in the food industry. If you looked at my board of directors, they were all very experienced people. I made sure that I surrounded myself around people that had done it before and did it really big. I mean, you hear the old saying of you're like the five people you hang out with truly in your business. You need to have those people that have been uber successful and surprising when you ask people if they'll be on your board, you'd be surprised at how many people are willing to help in the food industry in particular. So I think people are everything. Also just hiring people that are hungry, humble with strong emotional intelligence. And those were Those were the group that we had. And so we were able to do a lot of things without a lot of drama and then paying it forward. We always had some kind of philanthropy. Like it was really important for me to pay it back. So we did, we worked with the lupus foundation, American diabetes association, American heart association, and then a small group called the mentoring project to mentor kids that were in trouble. And so I'm really passionate about that. And that's a whole nother story because that's about my childhood and we won't even go there. And then, so your product has to be amazing. It has to taste good. It has to be authentic. It has to have real ingredients in it. And I think that I, oh, perseverance, the biggest one I wanted to talk about of all is you're going to have 
in any business and especially in the food industry, you're going to have a lot of highs and a lot of lows. I mean, a lot that it's <laughs> crazy how it fluctuates and you better let those highs dictate that get you out of bed on the days with the lows, because when you're running your own business or you've launched a product, there is no day off. Like you are going. And that's why I think passion is so important. You've got to love what you're doing and you got to love the outcome to keep going. So those are the five high level P's of my business and how I operated. So I love like that. The, then can you say them again? Passion. So passion, people, product, paying it forward and perseverance. Awesome. That those are great driving forces. And for anyone listening, I think we can see how that has helped you with this yeah. business. And I hope if anyone is struggling with any of those pieces, maybe you can take this as an opportunity to reflect back and ask yourself, where am I on those different pieces? So thank you so yeah. much for sharing those. And thank yeah. you for sharing your story. I love what you are putting out and the fact that there is such a purpose behind it. The product is truly like you did create this industry and you've helped a ton of people's lives along the way. So for anyone who is looking to find any of your fantastic products, where is the best place for them to be able to find you? So you can go online, califloweryfoods.com, and you can get our pizza crust and our flatbreads. You can go to Sprouts, you can go to Walmart, you can go to Whole Foods, you can go to, actually go to the website and type your zip code in and it'll tell you where to go. <laughs> but nationwide, we have a lot, lot of our products in there. And then now we have Mikey's too. So I love to, to make sure we mention Mikey's as well. And for anyone who doesn't know Mikey's, talk to us about Mikey's. Yeah. Mikey's is gluten-free and right now they're vegan and they're pizza pockets. So they've got breakfast pizza pockets. They've got regular pizza pockets. The breakfast ones have egg and different things in them. <laughs> I can't, I don't even know all of them. This just happened in, in March. I got to taste all of them. I went out to where they're made and they're phenomenal. So yeah, just Mikey's is nationwide in all the stores as well. So you I don't know if you can get Mikey's online, but they're still, they have a separate website than us. So yeah, you can go to Mikey's.com or go to any of those grocery stores that I mentioned. Well, you've given everyone some great reasons to like you go revisit the frozen section of the store, which maybe we had this Absolutely. outdated version where it's, oh, nothing's good for me there. There's so many fantastic new options there, including these products that you have put out there. So Amy, thank you so much for sharing your story. And I look forward to continue to watching the brand grow and watching you grow as well. Thank you so much for having me on. It's so fun to talk to you. And I told you I was a big talker. So I love thank it. You. <laughs> I just, I'm so passionate about the story. I just want people to believe in what they do and go for it because you just never know what you can do, what kind of impact you can make.